Hey, how's it going? Let's learn to script for Reaper together. I'm Arya and I'll be your host and classmate for this series. One thing kind of missing from my life currently is that I don't know how to code too well. So the aim of this series is for us to learn to do this together. So I'll be the young grasshopper embarking on this wonderful journey and you're invited for the ride. Throughout the series, I'll be getting help from a lot of pros in the Reaper scripting community, have them share their best tips and favorite resources, and I'll try to condense what I learned each month into these videos and hopefully it'll be educational for for you as well. We're gonna start from scratch, talk about what scripting is and why they're useful in Reaper. We'll also discuss what is needed to start coding and point you to some really useful resources that we can study together as well. Something you need to understand is that when it comes to scripting for Reaper, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. There's nothing you need to code from scratch. A lot of what you may need to use already exists and you just take bits and pieces of that and assemble them. We will discuss this in more detail later, but I just want you to know that in case your idea of coding is some nerd dressed in all black typing away at breakneck speeds trying to break into the pentagon scripting in reaper is a lot less let's say action packed than that so as long as we know how to utilize our resources scripting for reaper can be very very easy Today's guest is Leandro Facchinetti, and Leandro is a very gifted coder. While a relative newcomer to the Reaper scripting community, Leandro is no stranger to programming, knows multiple coding languages, and has already written some of the coolest Reaper scripts out there. So a huge thanks to him, and make sure to check out his channel, which is linked in the description. I'm going to pass the mic to Leandro now. Hey Aria, it's Leandro here, and yeah, so writing rescripts is just grabbing bits of the API here and there and putting them together. Now, if you are a beginner, then the first thing you need to know is that you are in luck. To write for Reaper, you are going to use a programming language that is very suitable for beginners, and there is a lot of material out there to teach you how to program in this language, and also because writing scripts is a lot of fun. You can get a lot done with relatively few lines of code and and you see the things working in front of you in the DAW or maybe with the audio that you hear. So it is very gratifying to write code for audio and also video. But before we get started with how to learn, let's talk a little bit about what you can do with programming in Reaper. So there are two kinds of things that you can do mainly. You can write scripts and you can write JS effects. The scripts are automating things that you would do in the DAW. So anything that you can click around and do, or if you can use actions to do things like moving items on the timeline, creating tracks, changing colors, getting information from the items, all of those things you can do with scripts. And then there are the audio effects that literally change the audio in real time. You can also write video processors, though Reaper is not able to ingest video in real time, so those you can only do in post-production. With both Rescripts and JS effects, there is a lot that you can do in Reaper. There are some limitations because there are some things that the API just doesn't provide, but you can get very far, especially because when you're writing Rescripts, you can call out to the command line and use any program to process your audio or video or whatever. In fact, I have an example of that. I have a bridge between OBS and Reaper. That's one of my scripts, and it allows you to record video in Reaper because it calls OBS from the command line. So hopefully at this point you are excited and you want to start writing code for Reaper. What do you need to learn? Well, you need to learn a programming language that Reaper understands. And for writing scripts, there are four options. You can use EEL2, which is a language developed by the developers of Reaper. This is a language that is super simple. There are not many features for you to learn, which is a benefit, but the downside is that there isn't a lot of material for you to learn from because as I said it's a language that is for Reaper and there is not a huge community around it. Then there is Lua and this is the language that I recommend for most people who want to learn how to program for Reaper and maybe even to learn how to program in general. It's a super simple programming language suitable for beginners but at the same time it's more powerful than EEL2 and you will find a lot of material because Lua is used by other software like some games, Adobe products, also 
also use Lua and OBS. You can also script OBS using Lua. And then there is Python. The benefit of using Python for scripting, it is the most popular language of all these three. And there will be a lot of material out there for you to learn Python. And there will be lots of libraries that you may want to use in your scripts. There are even libraries for machine learning in Python. So you could think of an rescript that would call to an artificial intelligence to do something, which I find pretty interesting. But the downside of using Python is that it does not come with Reaper. So your users of your action, if you want to distribute your action, would have to install Python separately and set everything up. It's not as ergonomic. There is a fourth language, which is C and C++. And when you're writing C and C++, you have even more power to do even more things with Reaper because the C and C++ API for Reaper is more featureful. The problem is that C and C++ are languages that are very difficult to learn. There are lots of things for you to learn from, many books and tutorials and videos and courses, but it is a very low level language. You have to write a lot of code to get anything done. And if you make an error, it is more difficult to figure things out. And in general, it is less ergonomic. So in general, if you want to write scripts for Reaper, I recommend that you use Lua. On the other hand, if you're going to write audio effects, like maybe a compressor or an EQ or a delay, that sort of thing you have to write in EEL2. That is a language that is designed to do real-time processing of audio. Okay, so now you know the things that you can do in Reaper if you write programs, and you also know the languages in which you will write these programs. How do you learn and how do you get started? Well, I cannot help but plug my own channel here. In this channel, I cover rescripts, but also JS effects, and I have many scripts and effects developed. They are here in this repository. Everything will be linked below. Not only I have developed the effects and the scripts, but I also have done code reviews. And in some cases, I even have written the whole script live during a live stream. So you can catch up with the video on demand and see the things that are more related to the kind of thing that you would like to build. I try to explain everything in a way that makes sense to beginners. And if it doesn't make sense, then you should get in touch. And another recommendation is that you watch this channel in which I am right now. We are starting to cover more programming. We are planning on writing scripts that beginners can understand. And of course, anything else that you may find in all the scripts that you have installed on your machine. So maybe you have installed Repack and Repack comes with thousands of scripts, literally. You can click on edit action and you can look at the source code. And most of it will not make sense at first, but you should be able to like copy and paste things here and there and start building your scripts that way, which is a fair way to learn, to read what other people have written. I highly recommend this repository that has a bunch of templates. If you are interested in like maybe creating a media item, come in here and look for the section that is about item creation and you will find there are many scripts that are very well documented and teach you step by step what you need to do. It's not something that you're going to pick up overnight, but it's not too difficult. Many things you can do with relatively few lines of code and you can ask around and try to make sense of things and also ask on the forum that is also an excellent resource. The Reaper forum is filled with very smart people who are willing to help beginners. And anything you find by this person, you can just read and use because this person is an excellent scripter. Go to his repository and learn from there as well. So huge thanks to Leandro for all the stuff that he just showed us. Go to his channel and give him some love. We'll see more of him in the next episode, which is coming also today. And I just wanted to add on top of all the other stuff that Leandro mentioned, Xtreme, other than his repository, also has a YouTube channel where he has some tutorials for really beginner Lua scripts. They're in French, but they're English subtitles and they're not auto-generated. They are very good subtitles. So that's a really good primer as well. We'll take you about two hours to get through them. And there are a lot more links that I will include in the description of the video and even more links in the blog post. So make sure to check those out. Thanks for watching and you can click right here to watch episode one where we will talk about reading scripts. See you there, bye.